Good morning and welcome to Up For Debate. I'm your host, Nick, and today we take a deep dive into some recent developments in the city of Olean and discover whether or not the area is in a bit of its own renaissance. Uh, but first, let's ask the public what they think. Welcome to Public Opinion, where today we're going to find the public's opinions. Please tell me your name. Danielle. Do you think Olean's going through a renaissance right now? I don't know. Do you want me to define renaissance? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you think Olean's improving in, within like the market, and do you think Olean's becoming like from dead to not dead, like a renaissance? Um, yeah. What's your best improvement of the town so far? Them building another urgent care. That's beautiful. Please tell us your name. Miss Todd McLaughlin. Do you believe that Olean's going through a renaissance right now? What do you mean by going through a renaissance? Like improving, like becoming more and more financial. Well, we got some new businesses coming in, so yeah, a little bit of a one. What is your most excited uh, project that you've seen so far? Chipotle. Chipotle? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Guacamole. Please tell me your name. My name is Amber Christensen. Do you feel that Olean's going through a renaissance right now? Uh, yeah. I mean, there's some new stuff coming to Olean, which is exciting. What's uh, your most exciting improvement that's happening to Olean? I'm very excited about Chipotle. Guacamole. Do you think Olean's going through a renaissance? Yeah. What do you th what's a new addition that you think is going to be good for Olean? Chipotle. Do you think Olean's a good town? Nope. What are you excited for coming to Olean? Chipotle. Do you think Olean's a good town? No. Okay. Do you think Olean's going through a renaissance? Yes and no. What are you excited for in Olean that's coming? Um, I've noticed that there's going to be more job opportunities soon. There's a lot more construction going on in the area, it feels like. So, I mean, like, I guess that's good. Do you think Olean's a good town? Uh, yeah, it's not bad. It's, it's, it's a little nice town. Thank you. I'm Ryan. And I'm Keaton. And that's the end of our questions. Now, let's take a stroll down to the Olean Public Library and see about their growing community. Hello, I am Jane. We are here today at the Olean Public Library. Shh! Quiet. Sorry. <laughs> here at the Olean Public Library, they, they offer so many programs for a variety of different age groups, from young kids, teens, and even adults. Hello, and some of the events they offer here are investigation station, reading can be rough for kids and family, to even coloring coffee and conversation for the adults, to even gaming clubs for the teens. Would you like to introduce yourself? I'm Kathy Walters, and I work at the Olean Public Library in the teen room. So what would you say these programs help the people who participate in them? I think it gives them um, time to be with other people because after COVID, we didn't have anything going on. And it gets people out and communicating with each other and having fun. Thank you very much. What are some past events you have done that were your favorite and why? I like the art exhibits. All of those have been really nice here. Those are my favorite. And some of the speakers we've had here have been very good. Could you name some speakers for us? We had a professor from Alfred come um, to do um, bread baking. And that was real interesting. That was real interesting. Sounds very interesting and fun. Does the library benefit having all these events? I think it does. Um, it's good for the community to come in and see what's going on at the library. Where can the community find information on these events at the library? We have a Facebook page. Um, there's um, newsletters that go out every month, and there's uh, and there's stuff on there, and there's quite quite a few. Well, I thank you for uh, being with us today. Uh, I have taken too much of your time. Uh, I hope you have a great day. 
cheesy, crunchy, and back in business. That's what people are saying. Good morning. My name is Jamie. Let's t let's get right in right into the reopening of Pizza Hut. If you're a Pizza Hut lover, the wait is over. The Pizza Hut in Olean is now open for business. Hi, my name is Riley, and I'm standing right in front of the reopening of Pizza Hut. In April 2020, they unfortunately closed due to the COVID pandemic. In February, they officially announced they were opening it back up. On April 25th, 2023, they opened Pizza Hut up, Pizza Hut up and since then, business has been booming. I reached out to the owner to comment, but she declined. So we reached out to a few customers to answer a few questions. So, what are your thoughts on Pizza Hut opening back up in Olean? Um, I think it's great. Okay. <laughs> um, how did you feel when it closed? I was pretty upset, actually. We'd had to drive to Bradford to get Pizza Hut, so now we can just drive here instead of all the way over there. Um, have you been to Pizza Hut since it reopened? Yep. Okay, how was it? It was good. I would definitely come back. <laughs> okay. Thank you. You're welcome. What are your thoughts on Pizza Hut opening back up in Olean? I'm really happy Pizza Hut's opening back up. We've had, I feel like, quite a few businesses um, that I've enjoyed go out of business, especially during COVID, um, and the food industry is struggling. So it's good to see Pizza Hut open back up and have a, another spot or option for people in the area to get food or um, even come for lunch. Okay. Um, how did you feel when it closed? Um, I was kind of indifferent toward it, to be honest. I... I usually go like other places to get pizza. I haven't been to Pizza Hut in quite a while, but um, it was still sad just because it was during the pandemic and everything seemed to be shutting down. And you don't want that in a place like Olean where there's limited options. So um, to see it, any business close was kind of sad to me during it. Um, have you been to Pizza Hut since it reopened? I have not, but I've driven by quite a few times and it's always very packed. Um, there was lines out the door the other day. Um, I definitely want to come try a few things, so I haven't been yet, but I'm, I'm planning on it pretty soon. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Riley, Studio 6. Good morning, I'm Hannah. We interviewed Tyler Mott, a tattoo artist at the Eclectic Body Art Shop. Let's see what he has to say. Hi, I'm Michael from Studio 6, down here at West State Street only at the Eclectic Body Art Shop. We have an interview with one of the workers inside, so let's go in. I'm here with Tyler, who is a worker at the Eclectic Body Art Shop here in West State Street, Olean. Do you know anything about how ele Eclectic um, Body Art got its start? Uh, yeah, the shop started about 15 years ago or so. Uh, Corey opened it shortly after leaving uh, the underground in town. So that's about it. It's really not too deep of a story on that one. He just, yeah, Corey started about 15 years ago. Then we've been started off uh, other end of the block and then about five years after that we bought this building and moved down here and slowly been remodeling and changing things around here but yeah that's about it <laughs> yeah thankfully the industry does really well in a population where there's a lot of young people and stuff like that so if there's anything about this business you could think about changing in your opinion what would those things be Oh, adding 100% more regulation into it. There's too many people that are able to just buy tattoo machines off of Amazon and do anything like that and cause actual damage to people. And uh, besides the point of just doing the bad art, uh, the whole bloodborne pathogens end of it isn't monitored enough with people just able to do it in their houses so easily. So I would want that be very nice. <laughs> Other than that, though, it's pretty nice. I don't really, the rest of us good. <laughs> Just, yeah, higher standards for artists would be nice. And finally, what would you say your inspiration for working or doing body art in general was? Uh, I mean, my biggest inspiration for it, when I was like a real young kid, uh, I had a couple of people around that were like very heavily tattooed and just me always being into art kind of just naturally funneled and down that avenue. Um, there really wasn't any specific artist or person. It's just been a mix of a lot of different people influencing me over the years and molding my art to be more into that. That's all we have for today. Again, I'm Michael with Studio 6. Starting in Wellsville in May of 2021, Gracie's Primitives has recently moved to Portville. But don't worry, because we will continue to serve the community by offering affordable and unique decor and gifts.
open Wednesday from 10 to 5, Thursday and Friday from 10 to 8, and Saturday from 10 to 4. In fundamental building skills, we focus on the mechanics in building, like plumbing, heating, cooling, and electric. We asked a few students how they feel about this class. My name is Melanie and I am FBS class. What do you like the most about this class? Uh, the hands-on learning you get and uh, the knowledge you can use in both your personal and professional life. Well, it's a very friendly environment. We have an amazing teacher. Um, it's just overall enjoyable. You learn a lot of important skills that will help you later on in life regardless of the career you take. Would you recommend this class to future students? I would recommend this class. Um, it, it's definitely nice working with your hands and learning anything you might need. Yeah, because you can learn a lot about the field of electrical, HVAC, and plumbing. Yes, I would. Uh, in the class, you'll learn electrical, plumbing, and HVAC systems. Um, if you like uh, working with your hands, it's a very good class to take, so I would, in fact, recommend it. Flashing and jumping, that's what the local youth of Olean will be doing soon at the Eric Lane Outdoor Center. It's also worth noting that the Olean City will be opening over a $2 million project for another splash pad at War Vets Park. Take a look. Running, splashing, and jumping. That's what the local youth will be doing here at the Eric Lane Outdoor Center at the Olean YMCA. Where you can see that the YMCA is making their Eric Lane Outdoor Center where kids and adults can have outdoor fun. There will be the Cutco Splash Park with multiple spray features in the summer, a winter play park which families can ice skate and do other outdoor activities with during the winter, an airnasium which can be used for a multitude of things such as birthday parties, games, sports, and other outdoor group activities. There will be a fire pit which will be the center point of the park to socialize and enjoy the warmth. A playground will be added in as well for the enjoyment of the youth who go there to the outdoor center. And finally, there will be a bathhouse for the community which will be secured by a fence. In this center that will be open in late November, early December, which will be open all seasons which Eric Lane advocated for to help the community with his last action of philanthropy after dying. In 1977, Olean's Mall opened up with 52 brand new stores as you rate. As you know right now, that is not the case. Join me and Keaton as we go in depth with this. In 1977, 52 brand new stores lined the lots of Olean Center's Mall. And today, only two of those original stores remain. In 2018, Bontown would close its doors, an action in which would pave the way for the future of the Olean Mall. Since then, throughout the years, store after store would close. Unlike Bontown, these are not only due to going bankrupt, Online shopping has made getting products hassle-free, having people not even leaving their beds to order the next summer t-shirt, leaving the mall today seeming almost abandoned. Potholes over the parking lot, and you can hardly pass another person. It's like a ghost town. Hello, my name is Delaney Grandusky. I'm a resident of Portville, New York. I come here about once a month. My most visited store would be Reno's. I'd see the future as down the drain and demolished. As a kid, being told that I would come to this mall, was almost like a trip to the fair. And that's just the thing. No one needs to go to malls anymore. Nobody chooses to go to malls anymore. And it's not just Olean. Malls across the country are facing the exact same problem. During Christmas shopping in the Spirit Halloween store in October is probably the only time the mall sees foot traffic. As of today, the only stores open were FYE, Kohl's, K Jeweler, Claire's, Juicy Penny, Bath and Body Works, Closed last month. Where's pizza? In the arcade. And most of the time, people don't even enter through the main plaza, but rather enter through the back doors of stores. And people are starting to take notice. YouTubers classifying them all as dead or abandoned with multiple comments from people around the world are seeing this. And that brings us all back to Bonton. Last year in December, it was announced that this entire facility will be demolished and turned into a four-story, 60-unit home apartment building for seniors. But so far, nothing's been done about it. 
Do you like fresh produce? Well, you're in luck. Now our own CTA Posty Center, uh, yeah, up and coming aquifer, uh, not aquifer, aquaponics, take a look. Good morning, I'm Nick, and behind me is the future site of the Olean CTE Center's hydroponics project. The project is currently in its infancy, but is quickly picking up momentum and looks to become one of the key innovators in the Olean Renaissance. So aquaponics is really, it's a system that will have fish, um, plants, and so on. Uh, the nutrients, uh, the waste from the fish will feed the plants, the plants will grow, will harvest the plants. Uh, we have artificial light that will be down in there along with, uh, it's a you know, confined system uh, already set up. So, yeah, it's a, it's a new arena, new area that we're getting into. Seems to be up and coming in our, um, in our region. So uh, we're going to try to teach as many students and, and people about it as we can and also produce a lot of uh, good fruits, vegetables, and stuff like that for uh, not only our center but the community. So the community as a whole, again, it's going to help educate folks into this new realm of, uh, of agriculture and I think it'll uh, allow us to provide you know leftovers that we have from our system to a lot of different places in the community that could use it. Great, just about every class we're looking at uh, touching with this uh, through integrated science lessons that'll be um, you know evolved from actually having the system in place along with um, our fundamental building systems. We'll work on the plumbing, the electrical, the HVAC part of it. Um, and I'm sure welding class will be making some brackets and, and uh, supports for us along with painting them in the collision repair shop. Uh, advertising uh, help with what we're doing can be done with media, EVP, and some of the other programs. So The project is currently slated for a release early next school year. I'm Nick with Studio 6. Ultimately, we leave you with the question, is Olean in its renaissance? Did it ever decline to begin with? For Studio 6, I'm Nick, and this has been Up for Debate. And on behalf of myself and our team, we'll see you next time.